Okay. Building on the previous lecture, we are discussing on the chemical components of plasma membranes, which we say plasma membrane uh, mainly consists of lipids and proteins. And there is wide, a wide variation in lipid and protein ratio between different cell membranes. The functions performed by cell and the location determine the quantity of proteins and lipids that are present in their membrane. So if you look at this uh, table, you have membrane. This is column for uh, membrane of this various um, organelle uh, and cell organs, right? So you have uh, the protein components, protein composition, and also the lipid composition. If you look at the membrane of erythrocyte, which are the red blood cells, the membrane of that uh, erythrocyte is, consists of 49% uh, protein and 41% lipids, while the membrane of, uh, of uh, liver, hepatocyte rather, cells that are found in the liver, you have 60% of them that are protein and 40% that are what lipid. Central nervous system myelin, you have 20% protein, only 20% that is protein and 79% is lipid. So outer mitochondria, uh, the membrane of outer mitochondria you have 50% of it that is protein and 46% lipids, while the inner mitochondrial membrane it has 75% uh, protein and only 23% lipids. This will not surprise you because the uh, inner mitochondria has a lot of enzymes uh, which where uh, respiratory uh, uh, metabolism is taking place. So we have a lot of enzymes that are what they're doing uh, the process of that metabolic process of uh, energy production. So you remember mitochondria is the what? The powerhouse which produces the ATP. So there are a lot of enzymes there. So that is why you have 75% of the protein composition that is found in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So let's look at the lipids that are found. You remember we said membranes composed of lipids and proteins. Now let's look at the lipids composition of the plasma membrane. There are several types of membrane lipids, different types. The fundamental building block of cell membrane are the what? Phospholipids. Phospholipids are the most abundant lipids that are found in, in, the, in the cell membrane. So when we're going to talk about lipids generally, you understand that, that these phospholipids are a class of lipids that contain phosphoric acid in addition to the alcohol and other components that are found in the normal, uh, let's say, triacylglycerol. So for triacylglycerol, which are the simple lipids or simple fats, they have fatty acid attached in position one, position two, position three of glycerol. So the alcohol that is found there is what is glycerol, which is attached to three different fatty acids. But for phospholipids, they have, in addition, they have what phosphoric acid functional group. That is why they are what phospholipids. So when we come to discuss about them in details, you will see their structure, structural composition, what and what they are made up of. But for now, we should know that membrane lipids, phospholipids are the, most, are the most abundant. So other lipids that are present in the cell membrane are cholesterol. You remember the structure that I showed you initially, there is uh, cholesterol in it, and also there is what? Glycolipid. So um, you have membrane lipids are also, they have what? They, they are amphiphatic molecules. That is means when we say amphiphatic, that means they have what? hydrophilic and hydrophobic ends. They have a portion that is one uh, portion is hydrophilic and the other portion is what hydrophobic. When we say hydrophilic, it means it loves water. So water loving. So that portion tends to be 
exposed to the uh, to the uh, surface where it can interact with water. So that is why it's hydrophilic. And the other form, uh, portion that is hydrophobic, it, it hates water, doesn't like water, will be embedded deep inside the membrane so that it will not be the one interacting with water. So this big the picture is a simplified structure of plasma membrane bilayer. And the membrane is in two layers. That is why it has bilayer. It is called bilayer. Now, if this is the outer membrane, it has the polar head, which is the hydrophilic portion facing the outer membrane, while this that you are seeing is what hydrophobic portion, which is at the hydrocarbon chains of fatty acid that are facing inside the cell. And also, because it is bilayer, at the other end, if this is inside the cell, this should be the outside of the cell. So it's still, still the same uh, the same architecture is repeated here. You have the polar heads that are facing outside and the hydrophobic, which is because they are not hydrophobic, hydrophilic, they like, they love water, so they can interact with the environment. While you have what the hydrophobic portion, which are the hydrocarbon channel of fatty acid facing inside. So they aggregate themselves, hydrophilic, hydrophilic outside, hydrophilic inside, and in, deep inside the core of the membrane, you have what the hydrophobic portion embedded inside. This is what the hydrophobic environment. And it has polar head and it has what non-polar head inside. So we have this is an example of what has polypid. So what are these phospholipids? If you look at this structure up here, this cycle, it means the polar region and this long chain, there is fatty acyl chain, fatty acyl chain, right? So it has, if you look at this, this is from the glycerol backbone and this is the phosphate group that is found in the phospholipid. And this is what the, 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 the fatty acyl, this is the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? The, 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 okay, because we know phospholipids, they are lipids containing, uh, in addition to fatty acid and alcohol, they have phosphoric acid residue, phosphoric acid group, as I explained to you. So they, they, they sometimes they have a nitrogenous base at, in them. So for instance, if you have, let's say in glycerol phospholipid, the alcohol here is glycerol, it's glycerol. But in sphingo phospholipid, the alcohol is, is what is fingosine. So sometimes you have nitrogenous base that are uh, frequently uh, in, found in them. So, and this long chain is what is the fatty acid, fatty acid group. So it has this region in the polar group, and this is what hydrophobic, this is what should be hydrophilic. So if you look at the uh, phospholipid bilayer, look at it, and all this, these are the what polar head aggregating outside, and the hydrophobic portion here aggregating inside, and, and at the other end, you have the what polar head assembling themselves and aggregating the uh, non-polar or the hydrophobic portion inside. So you have this hydrophobic fatty acid tails and what hydrophilic uh, uh, polar head groups outside and inside. So this is the example of a three-dimensional structure of plasma membrane showing the two bilayers. So the major phospholipids that predominate in the plasma membrane of many mammalian cells are phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidyl ethanolamine and phosphatidyl serine. So, and in addition, in phosphatidyl chlorine, in addition to the phosphoric acid, the phosphoric acid group is actually attached to, to choline, choline uh, functional group. And in phosphatidyl serine, ethanolamine is, is, is attached to, to it. This is a two carbon amine, uh, compound. But in choline, you have the amino group, uh, the hydrogen of the amino group, three of uh, 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 metal groups are attached instead of the hydrogen. So that is why it's positive here. 
and we'll come to the subsequent classes where we'll discuss a little bit in, uh, in details, you will see the structures. So, and phosphatidyl serine. So, our uh, only phosphatidyl serine carries a negative charge. The other two are what? Electrically neutral at physiological pH. Some phospholipids, such as the inositol uh, phospholipids, are present in smaller appendages. They are usually referred to as phospholycerides. So, sphingomyelin is another group of phospholipids. It contains a sphingosine backbone rather than a glycerol, to which fatty acid and uh, phosphoryl choline are attached. It is electrically neutral at physiological pH, and they are prominent in myelin sheet. Myelin sheet. This uh, sphingomyelin they are the types of lipids or phospholipids that are found in, in myelin sheets. This myelin sheet helps insulating the, the nerves, just like the electrical wire, where you have the plastic rubber covering the copper wire inside, right? So it serves as an insulator so that you don't have what uh, mistransmission or spark when the electricity is being transmitted. So also this, you know, uh, electrical impulse are passing through the what, uh, what being sent to the, along the nerve, right? So it has to be what insulated. So this myelin sheet covers or insulates the, the nerves. So the phospholipids that are predominantly found in that uh, membrane or myelin sheet are what are the spingo myelin. So let's look at now the, the asymmetry of the li lipid bilayer. Lipid composition of the two monolayers of the lipid bilayer in all membranes are quite they are what quite uh, uh, different. So the you, you can see that it's bilayer, right? There is a portion that is facing inside and another portion that is facing outside this, right? So the composition of these uh, lipids are quite different. So in human red blood cell membrane, almost all the phospholipids, they have what choline, which is phosphatidyl choline and sphingomyelin, and are in the outer monolayer. So the outer layer consists of this uh, phospholipid in human red blood cell. Whereas phospholipid molecules that contain primary amino group that is phosphatidyl is an aligning in phosphatidyl serine at the inner monolayer are inside the monolayer that is inside the cell membrane. So glycolipids and glycoprotein are also found on the outer monolayer. So animals they exploit this phospholipid asymmetry of their plasma membrane to distinguish between life and dead cells. So we have glycolipids and glycoproteins that are found outside, outside the monolayer to the outer. So that monolayer is one that is interacting with the outside of the, what, the cell. So animals, they use this asymmetry property to what, distinguish between which cell is dead and which one is alive. So when animals cell undergo Apoptosis. This apoptosis is, you know, is program, program cell death, right? So phosphatidyl serine, which is normally confined to the cytosolic monolayer, which is inside, remember? So of the plasma membrane, it rapidly translocates to the extracellular monolayer. So in apoptosis, the phosphatidyl serine that was supposed to be inside, it translocates to the outside. So this phosphatidyl serine now exposes the cell surface. You know, it is exposed on the cell surface. It now serves as a signal that this cell is supposed to die. So apoptosis can undergo, can take place. So the, this phosphatidyl serine will now expose the cell to what? Macrophages. And these macrophages, they ingest and digest the, the dead cell. So that is what is happening. So you also have cholesterol in the cell membrane. This is a typical uh, structure of cholesterol. It is a four-carbon ring. It has four-carbon ring fused together, and it has uh, an aliphatic uh, group here. Okay, and it has OH group. So this is the structure of cholesterol. It provides stability to the membrane, and it is neutral at physiological 
pH. So you can also have glycolipids. With glycolipids, you know glycolipids, there are lipids that have what carbohydrate attached to them. So they have sugar residue that are attached to the lipid. Okay. So in glycolipids, one or more sugars rather than phosphorylcholine are attached to this group. So cerebrocyte is the simplest glycolipid and it contains either glucose or galactose. So cerebrocyte is the simplest glycolipid, it contains glucose or galactose. So more complex glycolipids such as ganglioside, they contain a branch chain of as many as even seven sugar residues. Okay. So in liposome also. So it's an aqueous compartment enclosed by a lipid bilayer. Liposome has a very important function. It can be used to deliver drugs to target cells or DNA to specific cells for gene therapy. This liposome now fused with the plasma membrane of the tiger cell, introducing the drugs or the chemicals it contains into the, into the cell. So this is the typical structure of liposome. It has lipid bilayer, it has co inside its water, and it has what hydrophobic cells. These are the hydrophobic, hydrophobic cells aggregating themselves, hydrophobic, hydrophobic, hydrophobic cells, while this is like this is what hydrophilic head, hydrophilic head, okay. So this is typical structure of liposome. It is used because it is made up of lipid, right? So it is now used as a vehicle to, to transfer uh, the drug to target cells, maybe DNA to specific cells for gene therapy. So where the liposome now go and fuse to the plasma membrane of that target cell and now introducing the content, which is the drug, into the cell. So now, those are uh, now the membrane lipids that we have seen. Now, let's look at the membrane proteins. These membrane proteins, they perform most of the specific functions of the membrane. They give each type of membrane in the cell its characteristic functional properties. And the amounts and types of proteins in a membrane also varies. For example, in the myelin membrane, which serves as mainly as electrical insulator for nerve cells. Remember, I explained this myelin sheet for you. So less than 25% of the membrane mass is protein because it is mostly uh, made up of what the protein, right? The, the lipids. The lipid component is more than the uh, uh, protein component because those uh, sphingomyelin lipids are helping in what insulating, in carrying out the insulation function of this uh, myelin sheath. So in the mitochondria, on the other hand, 75% of, of the membrane component is protein due to the presence of many enzymes and electron pumps that are what involved in what respiratory activities, metabolic activities where energy is what produced. So membrane proteins can be classified as either being either in peripheral or integral. Peripheral or integral protein on the basis of their own association with the membrane lipid. So in this section, you have the integral proteins which are found embedded in the lipid bilayer. So you can have different different uh, uh, conformation of these um, integral uh, proteins. You can have monotopic, which is alpha helix bound to one side of the membrane. It bounds, bounds one side of the membrane, but is embedded in the lipid bilayer. You can have uh, uh, biotopic, which is a single pass transmembrane alpha helix. It span from outside to inside of the cell, like this, as you can see. This is what embedded in the membrane. You can have polytopic, which is a multiple pass transmembrane alpha helix. You can have this multiple times. So if you have uh, alpha a biotopic multiple times, right, you can have it as what well, polytopic. So this is what we call the alpha helix one, by monotopic, biotopic, polytopic, they are all alpha helix uh, found embedded in the what lipid valley, and they are all integral proteins. You can have another one that is what theta barrel. Theta barrel, look at it. It's span like a coil now, continuously going inside the what along the membrane. So this is what theta barrel. You have the peripheral proteins now. They are found in the periphery of the lipid valley. They are found in the what periphery, not deeply embedded. They are found in the periphery, like for example, this is 
inside the cell box, uh, outside the membrane, but stuck inside, which is some of its uh, chain, uh, some of the residues of the chain being inside. So it is and at, it's within the periphery, not deeply embedded as what you can find in the integral protein. So there is also what we call glycoprotein. And these glycoproteins, they are both proteins that have sugar residues attached to them. So they are, being, they are very important in blood grouping. They are used in what blood typing. So for example, when you take a uh, red blood cell, different types of, uh, of blood that are found, you can have blood group O, blood group A, blood group B, and blood group, group AB. So many of these glycoproteins are component of cell membrane where they play a variety of roles in the process, such as cell ideation, cell uh, receptors for hormones responsible for negative charges of many cell surface and binding of sperms to egg. So the carbohydrate of, of glycoprotein determine the blood group antigen that have been uh, used in the blood type. So carbohydrates are attached to glycoproteins and glycolipids on the surface of the red blood cell. For one type of blood group, one of the three different uh, structures, term A, B, and O, may be present. These structures have in common oligosaccharide that is found, a uh, foundation called oligosaccharide foundation. This is oligosaccharide foundation that is uh, called the O antigen. So all of them, they have this O antigen. For example, now in blood group O, look at it. This is the red blood cell. You have the O antigen on the surface of the red blood cell. So it doesn't have any additional sugar or any additional uh, uh, substance between. So it's only the O glycoprotein, O antigen, O antigen that is in the word uh, blood group O. So for blood group A, it has in addition to that O antigen, it has an acetyl galactosamine attached to the galactose of uh, moiety. This is focus, this is uh, galactose, this is uh, N-acetyl glucosamine, and this is what? Galactose. So all of them, they have this arrangement of this O antigen. So for uh, group blood group A, you have the word uh, N-acetyl galactosamine attached to it. That is why it's what, this is what makes it different from others. So this is for blood group A. So this is the glycoprotein that is found in blood group A. So while for blood group B, instead of uh, uh, N-acetyl uh, galactosamine of A, it is having another galactose attached to the galactose initially, galactose that is found in O antigen. So you see, this is this is what typical of blood group A. So for blood group AB, it has the combination of the ant O antigen and what is being found in blood group A and blood group B. So that is why it is what blood group AB, because it has the glycoprotein of blood group A and glycoprotein of blood group B. So these are the keys for these galactose, n acetyl glucosamine, n acetyl galactosamine. This is focus and this is the red blood cell. It means these antigens they are on the surface of the red blood cell. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our lectures today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the lectures and feel free to ask questions and in the comment section. And, and until we meet next, thank you for watching.